Hi Spider fans, welcome back to the Tarantula Cave. Today we're going to be talking about these guys. Um, I don't know whether to say mantises or mantids. Um, I'm pretty sure that mantises refers to the genus mantis only, whereas mantids is, um, well, all invertebrates that look like this. So um, anyway, it's a tremendous pleasure to have John from Nerd Room here to help us out on our, um, on our quest to find out more about how to keep mantids. Uh, he's something of a, a mantid um, expert, I would say, uh, and I'm trying to make more videos that are going to be helpful for people getting into new inverts and new species in the hobby, um, and I can't think of a better person to ask a whole bunch of questions that you guys um, put to me, actually, uh, about beautiful, beautiful mantids and being looked at. It's freaking me out. Can you look somewhere else? Ah, oh, whatever. Um, so yeah, uh, I don't want to mess around too much. Uh, I'm going to just kick off with the questions. Every, every question is going to go on for about a million minutes. One, one million minutes. Question number one is, what are good beginner species? Right, okay, so um, good beginner species of mantis. Um, anything Rhombodira? Uh, anything Hirudula? Uh, anything Creobrota? And so what you got there is you got um, Romadira are all of the larger shield mantises. Um, Creobrota are the little flower mantises, and Hirudula are probably your most common mantises. Um, so that's your giant Asian, your rainforest mantis. <coughs> hmm. Sorry. Um, yeah, basically most of the larger ones that are pretty bold. And uh, they tend to be a little bit more common. Some of there's there's a few African giant African. Um, is that Sphilo mantis? Um, African lined mantis is great. Um, Clinia humerus, uh, which is wide arm mantis, are great, but a little bit harder to come across. Um, but I would say the best the best bet is to go for Rhombodira or Hirudula. Um, let me just go. Where are you? What are you doing? Come here. Come here. Come here, little lady. So, that is a Hirudula membrosia, or giant Asian praying mantis. She is extremely old. Um, when I say extremely old, uh, not that old for a, compared to other animals, but for a praying mantis, she's, she's outlived what she would normally. Um, now, if you were to go for a Hirudula majuscular, which is the rainforest, giant rainforest praying mantis, which is from Australia, they're one of my favourite ones, um, it would look very similar to this. They just tend to be a little bit bulkier, um, around the same size, but a little bit chunkier, and uh, these are a little bit sort of <laughs> stre stretchier, I guess. Uh, long limbs. They look like they're made out of out of spaghetti, all of the spaghetti attached to the praying mantis. Um, but yeah, these guys are good. They're great, and the reason they're great is because um, they are bold. They don't tend to be scared. So skittish mantises aren't a good one for a starter. Not just because they're skittish, but because you don't want to stress them out. If you've got a praying mantis that you're stressing out, ow, 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 um, then you're going to shorten its life expectancy, which is uh, a large portion of why. Um, my orchids don't do so well. Um, but yeah, this guy, absolutely fine. She's a good hunter, active hunter. Um, some of the prey mantises you can get, like Pharaoh Blesserus, will sit and wait until food comes up to them. But this girl is actually going to go out if she sees something, hunt it. She can take pretty large prey, which is another good reason for her to be a starter mantis, because it makes it easier to look after from a little nymph. Um, you can get these at an extremely young age. Uh, come here, girl. I'll tell you what, I can show you something which is gone up, 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 up onto the wall. Um, as if you watch my channel, as you probably will know, that sometimes when I get these larger girls there, uh, living out their final days, I just let them live on the wall, out and about, give them a bit of freedom. Um, but here I have. This is the sort of size that you would probably purchase one of these at. Um, 
This is going to be hard to show you. So this is an imp. Uh, now this is actually Ron Badira species Red Devil, which is extremely rare. Um, well, in this country anyway, in the hobby. I've actually never seen them in the hobby in this country. I know that they are about, but I thought I'd get a few when I did see them because don't want to miss the opportunity. Um, so yeah, you're looking at something from this size, going something like that in a short period of time. It's a great, great animal to keep and look at. Thanks for that, John. On to question number two. What are the temperature and humidity requirements of mantids? Okay, so that's a pretty bold question. Um, bold? It's not a bold question. It's a broad question. Broad is the word I was looking for. Will you take it back, get what I said, bold, and change it for broad? Broad question. So, <coughs> there's lots and lots of different prey mantises, all of which will require different things. So if you go for any of these basic ones that I've said, um, room temperature, 20, 24 degrees, fine. They can drop down, they can even drop down to 16, 17 degrees at night, 16 at a push, but room temperature tends to be fine for most of these. You won't need a heat mat, you won't need a heat light, you won't need anything like that. Um, however, um, Promances is a broad spectrum, all of which can be looked after differently. So if you are looking to keep yourself a devil's flower mantis, you are going to need to bulk it up to about 37 degrees. Um, barely any humidity, and that is a huge temperature for a prey mantis. I mean, you're you are, you are pushing it. It's as hot as you could possibly go. I don't know any tarantulas or anything you keep at that temperature. It's just, uh, yeah, so it is extremely broad. There are some that like it utterly humid. Um, so if you go for Hanii confusia, which is the moss mantis, they live in little cold areas that are extremely, extremely humid. You can go up to 70, 80, even pushing 90% humidity. So I would say, um, in general, you're looking room temperature to 24 degrees. Um, if you're looking for sort of Hiridula or Madeira or any of the regular species, and probably 60 to 70% humidity, and maybe you can go a little bit higher, but... Um, for most of these species, what I would say is don't worry about getting a humidity gauge. I mean, as long as you've got a decent room temperature, just make sure the substrate isn't, one, soaking wet, but also not dry as dry can be. Um, then, every day, just in the morning, give them a couple of little sprays. And, uh, yeah, they're fine. They're pretty much fine. You want enough spray so that you get a tiny bit of settle on the edge um, of the enclosure on the sticks and stuff. You'll see them having a little drink from it. And you want to keep the soil so that you can, you know, it's got moisture in it, but you don't want to be able to squeeze moisture out of it. Then it's going to be filthy, filthy humid. Um, but yeah, most, most are pretty easy. So I guess without having specific ones to choose from, that's, that's the most, uh, the, the best answer I can give. Question number three, what kind of enclosures can you use? So basically what you're looking for when you have prey mantis enclosure is one, it's uh, a tool enclosure. They, I, I read somewhere it should be three times the height of the prey mantis and twice the length, which is utter trash, basically. Um, if you're keeping a prey mantis who is three centimetres long and something which is... Uh, no, for the most part it's utterly trash, but look, for example, if you've got nymphs, if you've got tiny little nymphs, I've got these little Rombadira nymphs in here, they are fine, they can, they can, they have room to stretch out um, when they molt, because when they molt they're going to go onto the top, they're going to get on something they can hang onto, and they're going to molt out, so they need to have room for... Well, yeah, they need to have room to molt out, so twice their height plus extra. Um, and then you've got to bear in mind that if they're going to do that from a little stick, which is halfway up your enclosure, they need to have that room underneath of that stick. You need to give them plenty of space, basically. As much space as you can. The more space, the better. You can keep them in a smaller enclosure. Not going to do them any harm. I used to use the little cricket tubs for some of the smaller prey mantises. Um, certainly for nymphs, 
and that's a great way to uh, that's a great way to keep them to start. However, obviously you want to bulk them up. I'm just having a look around, see if I've got anything. <coughs> so, things you can use. This doesn't have promances in it. It's an old box. This is something that um, I used to use at one point for a smaller type of promantis. Now you want something that's fairly tall, but you also want something which has got good ventilation. Now that's the big, big key. That's the thing that kills a huge amount of promances. People having their mantis in a glass enclosure with not a lot of ventilation. Put ventilation on the top as much as you can, um, but you also want cross ventilation. You want the air to be able to travel through the bottom and out the top. Um, so basically the more ventilation you can give them the better so this will do this is fine this has got ventilation on the top ventilation on the side um, the best the best possible thing you could do and excuse me these are a bit old is get these like these pop-up net enclosures You've got plenty of them they're quite cheap you can get them from anywhere spider shop does them eBay does them um, they are great you can get them oh. Preferably in a white mesh because you can see through them a little bit better. But if you don't like the look of them, they look a little bit tacky. Then uh, there's other options. Let's have a look. This is uh, again. This doesn't have a promance in it, but ideal for a large um, for a large promantis would be a oh god the edge of this. Christ! It needs to clean. There's nothing in here. It's just plants again. Just plants in here. Needs to clean. Um, but this sort of size enclosure would be ideal. So this is 30, 30 back, 45 tall. Um, obviously without it being so damp. This has got a sprayer in it, so this is filthy moist. I don't even know what's going in here yet. And it's been attacked by a bazillion slugs. But in terms of the enclosure, exoterras, exoterras would be great. Um, you've got the ventilation here, full ventilation on the top. Whomever. Whomever, and here comes the big whomever. Get in there. Come on. Are you getting in there? You, there you go. We're in. Go back. Go back. Um, if you're keeping something, again, like devil's flowers or violins, which are from hot places, I would highly recommend having an enclosure made entirely of mesh. Um, if you look through some of my older videos, I think I have a build video for a couple of enclosures I built just a simple wooden frame with some of this fibre mesh this is the bug proof one so they can't snip through it you don't, don't get crickets escaping everywhere because they can't snip through it and they will try and snip through it um, with their tiny little snip snips um, so yeah um, Really, you, there's, there's all sorts of things you can use. You can makeshift something. Um, these again haven't got prime. Well, you can do this. Let's have a look. Have a look. Let's have a look. No, not ideal. Um, you can use these sort of enclosures. This has got a transfer in it. Um, just make sure you cut a hole out of the lid. Mesh on the top. Holes around the bottom substrate not like 90% of the way up that would be ideal for a little young praying mantis um, I mean really anything is uh, it's quite an easy whatever you want to use I wouldn't if you go online there's lots of these sort of specialist praying mantis houses and really it's a bit of a con the best thing to do is either get one of those mesh things or buy a decent tub or a regular tank just make sure it's got as much ventilation as you can Question number four, how should the enclosure be decorated? Right, okay, so decoration, anything you want. Um, you want to give them plenty of places to climb around. Um, yeah, I guess the more the better. It depends how much you want to see your praying mantis. So you want to give them plenty of space to climb around. Um, fake plants, live plants are fine. Obviously you've got to bear in mind how much moisture you're going to have to put into the live plant. For the base, I literally just use cocoa fibre. You can use other things, but you know they're not wandering around on the base. Ninety percent. What is that? Sorry, ninety percent of the time, um, they are 
up in the air on the ceiling, hanging down from somewhere, they're not going to use the base. Um, so cocoa fibre is fine, it holds the moisture fine. Um, and then yeah, just as much wood and sticks and things that you can fit in there to make it look glorious as you can. Uh, I used to use a lot of fake plants. I, funnily enough, used to use blue tack on the back of the fake plants so I could move it here, there and everywhere whenever I wanted. doesn't look the best, but when you're moving things about, it's ideal. Um, I mean, I think that's pretty much it. You can... I wouldn't... You can use a water dish in the base, but I wouldn't. I would stick more with regular sprays for them to drink. They're going to drink from the... Um, from wherever it settles as opposed to a bowl. They're just not going to go and use a bowl. Um, you know, if you're spraying them once every maybe once every morning or a stretch once every couple of days, they're not going to need it. If you're doing gargoyle promances, never spray them. They get all their moisture from their food. Um, yeah, they're pretty 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 easy. It really can be whatever you want, whatever you want to make of it. Um, I mean, especially with things like uh, Creobrota gemitus, they are so easy, you could buy yourself a giant fish castle if you wanted and stick it in there, and I don't think it would make any difference to it, it would be absolutely fine, as long as you've got space to hang, so he can, um, so he can molt, and he's got plenty of places to hide, not that they will hide a lot, um, they will be fine, I always try and stick to um, backgrounds which are near on the same colour as the Prime Mantis. I don't know whether they actually do feel more comfortable in it, but presumably that's what their colour's there for. Um, so yeah, that's just preference for me. But it's preference for you. It's preference for you as a keeper. As a, as a keeper of bugs and insects, the preference is yours. Question number five, how long do they live? How long do they live? Okay, so not long. Um, this is partially why I always say that a easy prey mantis is a great pet for kids. Um, and not that they're not delicate. If you grab them, they will squeeze into toothpaste. However, if you want a pet which you buy your kid and then they want to look after it for its entire life cycle, um, some of them can go up to a year and a few months at a stretch, and that is a real stretch. Um, my Parablethrus culei lived for about a year and two months, I think. Um, most, most to about nine months. It also depends on how much you feed them, how fast you grow them. So, if you if you elong, you know, if you feed them every two or three days, um, a reasonable meal that keeps them at a good weight, then. Um, and keep them at a mid temperature then they're gonna last for a long time if you feed them all the time and have them in a hot room they're gonna bulk up and they're gonna molt and they're gonna get big fast and that is called power feeding and you are definitely gonna shorten their lifespan basically once they get to their final molt which is when they've got their wings and you know their, their full shape which tends to be about seven molts I think I could God, how do I not know? Anyway, um, yeah, it tends to be about seven molts. Um, they have a few months left in them. That's basically their period to breed and then to die. So what you tend to notice, and I know I've already had this brain out. Oh, shit. Here she is. I think she's going on to about... When did I get her? She's going on to about nine months now. Um, if you look closely at her face, she has that little black mark appearing over her mouth. Now that wasn't there a little while ago. Sometimes you'll notice them getting them on their eyes, these big old black marks. And it tends to be when they're getting older and their body is starting to close down. But she'll still be good for a while. She'll still be eating. Um, but eventually they'll weaken and they'll stop eating. And, uh, yeah sad to see but it's it's one of these things where I feel like sometimes it's nicer for someone to have an animal that they're really intrigued for its entire life than a lot of people that will get their children a hamster and 
a year into having the hamster, the kid gets bored of it, and then the hamster's got another two years of living around and not, you know, not having maybe the attention that it should have done. Not that that's to dig at anyone, but I just, I know that's how that works sometimes. So praying mantises are ideal for kids if you've got young ones. They're also ideal for anyone else that's not a kid because, you know, they're great. They don't live too long. Not too much responsibility, a little bit more than a tarantula because you had to feed them in water every couple of days as opposed to every week. Um, but not, not a lot of responsibility. You can clean them out once every week, two weeks, as long as you spot clean, make sure there's not, you know, not dead crickets and stuff everywhere. Pretty easy to look after. Um, and yeah, highly, highly recommended. And I, I feel like I'm, am I answer, I'm answering a different question now. I sort of made this into a question. It's not how long they live. They live for sort of six to t six to fourteen months. Okay. And finally, question number six: How do you breed them? Everyone is different. Everyone is different. However, in general, two enclosures, male, female, mature them both. Um, and again, this is going for the basic ones. This is your lined, your Phragmites. Hey, they're not your basic ones, they're not basic at all. They're the complete opposite. Um, your Romadeira, your Hurdula, uh, your Bud Wings. This is, this is the same method I always use. So once they mature, make sure that they've both been mature for about two and a half to three weeks. I think three weeks is probably the, the safest way of doing it. Make sure that they're fully mature and ready to go. Two big enclosures. Two exoterras would be fine. Again, I don't have the stuff to show you right now. If you've been watching my channel, you know that I've cut out of Praymances a little bit at the moment, but I'll be getting back into them this year. Um, so two large enclosures, female in one, male in the other. A lot of decor for the male to hang out, like hide around in. As much space as you can give them. As bigger enclosures as you can give them. Even if you just get two huge plastic tubs, drill loads and loads of ventilation holes in them. Um, sorry, you only need one of them to be huge, the one for the male. Um, yeah, as much space as you can give them. Now, make sure both of them are extremely well fed. Um, I've seen people trying to feed them whilst they breed them, which seems a bit silly to me, but fine. Yeah, okay. And what you want to do is you want to have your male nice and secure and happy in his enclosure, and then you want to introduce your female so that the male can see him. Now, I think I've got a few videos of this again on my channel. Um, and that way what happens is she'll stroll past and he'll creep up on her at a comfortable distance and then he'll go and he'll, he'll go and do the deed. Now the issue if you do it the other way around, if you put him into her enclosure, she sees him straight away and she thinks, oh dinner. They will attempt to eat each other. Um, if they're obviously well fed, you've got a better chance she's not going to be so bothered. Um, if Basically what, what you're doing by putting the male into the larger, larger box and um, giving him all the decor and allowing him to be the one who stays in the enclosure, you're upping his percentage chance of him being able to get away. Every, every, every extra you can give him is great and obviously you want to keep him alive. Um, whether you're going to breed him again, you can breed him again with the same pro mantis just to double check that it's worked a few weeks later or maybe even when she's into her oof laying three or four oof in, you can breed them again and just make sure they're just as fertile. And so, yeah, what you're doing is you're trying to push up push up his survivability rate as much as you can. Now some breeds aren't so bad, others just are crazy for cannibalizing. Um, if you're going to breed promances, what I always say is buy three males, buy one, one female. Three males, one female. And, uh, Especially if you're if you're aiming on breeding, that's the way to do it. And this is this is the reason why, even though quite often it'll work the first time with the first male, if you've got a couple of extra male primances, fine, it's no harm. They're at a mature stage; they're living for another two or three months anyway. It's not that much responsibility. They don't cost a lot to keep. However, if you buy a pair, and I know people that buy pairs, and I've bought pairs in the past, and it does go wrong, um, then you've kept them for so many months and you put them together and the male gets eaten the issue there is that sometimes something that was available a few months ago 
is no longer available at all. I've had plenty of times when I've had Premances that I've wanted to breed. I've had sort of females ready, male gets eaten and I just cannot find them anywhere and then a few months later they pop up everywhere so this is the this is the issue of Praemantis having such a short life cycle um, it means they're there and then they're gone and then they're there and then they're gone so you know they're easy enough to breed it is literally that you just need to leave them together he'll go and do the deed and then he'll try and escape and um, sometimes I used to if I had a day off I would actually get him out on the wall uh, or in the room that I'm in, let them get comfortable, then let the female out and then as soon as they've done the deed, they'll fly off um, and sometimes I could just put a film on and uh, just, you know, hang out or put a film on, they can be on the wall, they can be doing the deed get a little spoon, when she turns around into battle royale, I'm going to eat your face mode just get the spoon, put it in between um, and try and separate them. Obviously do as much as you can, but you also don't want to interfere. If you try and interfere whilst they're mating, it will go wrong. Um, if it does happen, you know, that's just, that's life. It's not ideal, but it does happen. Um, and yeah, I sort of just wish you the best of luck with it because, you know, it's a, it's, it's a great thing to do and it's very rewarding. The only thing is, the amount of nymphs you get, do your research on what you're doing. Um, you can have anything from 40 to 200 nymphs from one egg sac. Bearing in mind they'll lay six egg sacs. I do not agree with people that keep all of their nymphs in the same enclosure. Um, I know it makes it easier, um, but I feel like if you're going to breed Praemantis, they are cannibalistic from the moment they're born. Maybe they'll be alright for the first two or three molts. There's a few species which are a little bit different, ghosts and such. But, yeah, it's a... It's a in my experience, the best thing to do is to split them all up into individual tubs. Now, you need to make sure you have time to feed 200, maybe 300 nymphs every other day, a single fruit fly. Make sure they're sprayed. So it's it's certainly fun to do if you've got the time to do it, and I highly recommend it, but do make sure you've got the time to do it. Don't breed them. Nymphs are born, can't look after them. Um, it's, it's just not really right. but. Yeah, other than that, go for it. So wasn't that great? John knows everything about mantids. He's an absolute legend, and I want to massively thank him for taking part in this collaboration. I hope you've all learned a lot. I know I certainly have, um, and uh, he's actually whetted my appetite to get a few more of these beautiful, beautiful inverts. So, um, yeah, how great was that? Uh, as always, if you enjoyed this video, please do subscribe. Tell your friends about the Tarantula Cave, the more the merrier. Um, hoping to grow a lot this year in 2019, so, um, oh, you just clean your face, why don't you? I'm just gonna sort my feet out, thank you, you just carry on. Um, anyway, she's obviously very relaxed. Uh, yeah, what else can I say? If you subscribe, you might want to also hit the notification bell icon to get future updates of videos in the future. Um, big announcements coming up for the Tarantula Cave in the next few days, but I won't spoil that now. Um, in the meantime, take care and I'll catch you in the next one. Ta-ta, Martin! Toodaloo!